this is Freya here at Rockstar Arms at the radio station, the Black Rose, and I have our awesome guest here, our SL performer, and I just realized now that I'm having a drink, it's going to be more difficult, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Cassie, I am saying this correctly, right? Cassie Ansar, is that correct? Yeah, okay, awesome. awesome. It was just in a lovely set at our pub. We always love having her here. Thank you for being here, Cassie. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I do. I love it. It's a great place to play. A lovely atmosphere and all the people that come do seem to enjoy it. So It's my really pleasure. cozy. I really like it. I can't take any credit at all. That's all Viv. And whiskey um, in the pub. So. Yeah, Nick, mm. right. Although <laughs> right now, you know what, um, so that I could join you in a drink, I had, I had a I'd Ciroc in the freezer. So I'm having sort of a screwdriver. Oh, but nice. I, I added a splash of grape juice to the orange juice, so I don't know what to call it. To so be you're honest. being fancy then? It's a made-up cocktail? Exactly. <laughs> Somebody told me I should call it Freya on the beach. <laughs> That's a creative <laughs> name. <laughs> right, exactly. I usually like to start at the beginning. So, born in Scotland, right? Yeah, born and raised in Scotland. So I've been here mostly all of my life. Travelled a little bit when I was a bit younger, see between 19 and 21. But apart from that, I've always been here in Scotland, yeah. yeah. And uh, tell me about your early beginnings in, with music, when you discovered music. Goodness, music. I started playing music since I was about 10, 11. I, was, uh, I started on violin, so I was classically trained on violin. Really? Um, played that right up until I was about 18, 19. I was part of the Scottish Youth Orchestra. So I played uh, first violin for them. And then afterwards, um, I started playing piano. Um, and then as I got a bit older, I picked up the guitar, um, found Second Life and just found it a great way just to pop in and play a few songs for people, you know. Right. Um, a guitar is so much easier. You can just pick it up anywhere. Mm -hmm. to and you can tote it anywhere. Yes, and everybody sir. loves it, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so what part of Scotland are you in? I'm in Glasgow. Oh, I'm, right, okay. I'm right on the sort of west coast. Uh, but it's quite in the heart of Scotland, to be honest. It's in the middle, I guess. I'm not really in the highlands or the borders. I'm kind of just smack bang in the middle on the sort of west coast. Who were your uh, influences musically when you were a, a small person? A small person, to, to, to be to be honest, I'm quite embarrassed to admit this one, but I always loved the Beach Boys, you know, I just loved their harmonies and I loved their voices. Awesome. Um, and when I when I got a bit older, Brian Wilson started doing shows um, in the Royal uh, Theatre in Glasgow, so I went to see him a few times and sort of just, I guess, the main people like the Beatles and I liked all the sort of Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, sort of like all the old time classics. Uh, anything sort of actually musically based. I was never really into chart music. Right. No, don't get me wrong. Like if I'm driving in the car and there's a chart song on, and I'll sing along to it, you know. But mm -hmm. when it comes to me playing music, I, I'll choose. I'll be more inclined to play the classics and the oldies, you know. And you first picked up your guitar then, really young. When, how old were you then? When you guitar? Yeah. No, I mean no. violin. What I was eleven. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, guitar, I'd say only in the, the last say, six years. Uh, it's been quite recent, yeah. And um, how many songs do you say you would have right now in your repertoire? Uh, I'd say a good hundred at least. Nice. Um, and nice. Hazel's always pushing me to learn more, you know, <laughs> like if I'm out and about, I'll always get a text on my phone. It'll be like, oh, you should learn this song, Cassie, you know. <laughs> I actually got the nerve to do open mic the other day and oh. there was no alcohol involved. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. maybe there should have been. But there wasn't. <laughs> How did you discover Second Life? It was a strange one. What I was doing was, I, I am a bit of a gamer, to be honest. I I always sort of played um, strategy based star um, RTSs. So I was always into like um, um, Age of Empires and Starcraft and all of those games. And I was just looking for a new game to play. And I was on uh, Google searching all these free to play games, whatever. And I just stumbled across Second Life. And I remember the first day I came in. <laughs> 
um, and I just didn't know where to start, to be honest. Um, so I searched music, you know, because I've always been sort of like gravitating towards music. And I went into this, uh, it was a club, I think, it was a music club, and I was just a total noob, as you are when you just join, you know. And I'm standing there and all these people are just saying hi. I'm like, oh, they're really friendly. <laughs> and I realised when I look back on it, I must have been a complete mess and they were just taking pity on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or it was a hostess and they were being paid. To say, that's that's what I, that was a rude awakening for me. Oh, they're being paid to say hello to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how did you get started in music with NSL? Musically, you know, this is a story. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> to be honest, like, it would be the usual thing. You would go to all the sort of open mics, like you just mentioned earlier, or uh, the karaoke places, you know, and sing a few songs. I would never sing. I am. I was really quite shy to start with, because um, as much as I've played instruments all my life, I've never sang until I came into Second Life. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I came in uh, one night, I was drunk, as usual, <laughs> and my pals were in the karaoke place and were like, go up and sing a song. Nobody cares if you're rubbish, you know? And I was like, oh, OK. So I went that up and helps. I sang, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I went up and I sang a few songs, and then once people heard a few songs, they were like, wow, you're actually really good. You should try and uh, do a bit more of it. I was quite reluctant because I have a bit of a busy real life. You know, I'm working and stuff right. and I have quite a big family. Right. Um, so to be in Second Life uh, for a few hours at night, I do only get those sort of few hours. And then I, I love to use it doing music, but I was like a bit reluctant to start actually performing. So I would go and hang out at these open mics and maybe do a few songs here and there. Uh, but one, a few, I became friends with a few of the musicians. I don't know if you know uh, Mandel Dragonash. He was quite a, a popular musician a few years back, but he's left just now. He pushed me towards doing gigs. Um, and after the first few, it was like a duck to water. The nerves just dissipated because everyone in Second Life mostly everyone in second life are so friendly and encouraging you know right. so and you're really really good that helps you know what oh, I mean? well, thank you what if, you know i mean what if somebody you know i've never been to a place where people were rude you know to somebody who wasn't good you know but it helps you, you get the odd one you know the odd one comes out of the woodwork every so months or whatever but to, to right. be honest everyone really has been so supportive and and the feedback you get from when you play it really makes you want to do more of it you know and so I've just started doing more gigs just based on what people are saying to me you know right right well, how, uh, what's your favorite thing about performing in itself oh, there's so many I mean starting off it was it was just the fact that I was really shy I, I had a few bands uh, growing up like when I was a teenager like early 20s but I would always be in the background you know I would play violin uh, just sort of maybe back in vocals at the most. I was never at the forefront, you know, standing on the stage in the middle where everyone was looking at me. And the thought of doing that just crippled me. To be honest, I'd need to drink a bottle of whiskey, but then <laughs> nobody wants to hear me <laughs> sing after that. You know? So in Second Life, it really just gave me a place to come and, and get over that fear. Even after, like, maybe a year after performing in Second Life, I managed to get out into a few open mics on my own, just me and my guitar, you know, mm-hmm. in real life. Oh, really? So, yeah, Tell it really has. That. Well, to start, I mean, Second Life just built my confidence up so much that I would sit and play to all these people and they would stay and listen, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, you're still here, you know. <laughs> so I, I looked up sort of open mics nearby and... I found one sort of in the next town over on a sort of Thursday night and I was like, okay, I don't imagine that many people I know will be at that one, so I'll pop over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was great, honestly. It was like a three-song rotation, you know, so I, I only done the three songs, to be honest, but the fact that I got on the stage and done it in the first place was a big achievement, considering, like, the year before I was... I mean, my first gig in Second Life, I think I sounded like a sheep. I was, like, shaking. My voice was like, ah. Oh. For me, it was like a breath thing. Like, I was nervous, so I couldn't breathe. <laughs> what is what is your, like, least favorite thing, if there is one, for performing? 
to be honest. And there isn't really a least favourite. My my biggest uh, challenge, I guess, to be in Second Life is just the time, honestly, to find, to come in, you know. Um, I'm working quite a lot just now in real life and, and hopefully in the, the next couple of months it is going to start um, being a bit less. Uh, but just now it's like I'm squeezing it in. I feel like I'm rushing home to do a gig, you know, and I'd rather... I'd rather just be at home and go, okay, I've got a gig. It feels like more like work. Yeah, yeah. Um, What do you get up to when you're not performing? And secondly... Well, either. Or just real life. Either, yeah. And secondly, probably shopping, to be honest. I love it. I go to all the events when they open up and I've got head addiction. So most of the tips I get in Second Life go towards my, my ginger hair collection. <laughs> um, outside, outside of Second Life, I guess probably just music, gaming. I try and go out a bit. Not so much just now because I'm working so much that the fact that when I have a hangover <laughs> takes me about three days to recover, you know. <laughs> I try and do get out when I can. What would you tell the folks out there that might have a guitar and want to sing for fun at home? How would you suggest for them to get involved? The, the vodka is kicking in, involved in the SL entertainment <laughs> community. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, the best thing that I ever did was just go and get yourself out there. You know, I mean, the, probably if you can find someone that's already doing it, like myself, I mean, if you've got any questions, send me an IM. I'm happy to answer them. I have done for people that are starting out. Um, but just get yourself out. Do some open mics. Generally, people that own venues pop into these places and they'll hear you singing, they'll hear you playing and they'll be like, oh, you could just sit here. It really it just builds from there, just build up and get, just get out there and let people hear you do it. And that, you know, as much as you might be nervous, I was um, just doing it more and more. It dissipates those nerves and, and it, it does it build your confidence so much. Right, right. Um, now, I know you have a support team. I know there's haze. So would you <laughs> tell me about the people around you and in, in, in appreciation of those folks? Oh, the people in Second Life that are my friends. I have so many of them. But at the forefront is Hazel, obviously. Right. I mean, she she's just um she's just my rock in Second Life. It's like I, before Hazel, I would book a gig and then forget about it. I wouldn't put it in my calendar, not out of ignorance, not because I didn't want to play it. I just, I was so hectic my real life. I would just play a gig and log out, you know. But now that I have Hazel there and people co- usually contact her because they know how erratic I awesome. really am. She really is. I'm always glad to go through her for somebody. Really. Yeah. I mean, I am quite erratic, so whenever someone even contacts me directly, I'll be like, look, I'll happily talk to you about it, but if you want to book it, you're better doing it through Hazel, just because it will be done right, you know? Um, But without her, I couldn't do it. I mean, she is there every single gig. She's there to greet people. She'll book it in my calendar for me. She'll send out my notices, my subscribe, everything. And most... Mostly everyone in the group knows her now, you know. Mm-hmm. She's just she's just part of the family. Like, when she writes in my group chat, they'll be like, ah, hi, Hazel. She's awesome. I love her <laughs> pieces, honestly. And I see it at every gig, and she's probably like, ah, oh, shut up, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we I love going through Hazel. I'm, I'm always glad that she's always quick to respond and so sharp. Yeah, because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I come in second life and I literally AFK until I've got a gig, right? So when people IM me, they probably think, ah, she's ignoring me. I'm really not. I'm really, <laughs> I'm just not there. But I do, I have quite a few friends um, around me that are really supportive of um, Garrett, as you see, he always comes to the gigs. Mm-hmm. He kind of helps me out when Hazel's not around. Um, and I've got Lewis. Uh, you just don't feel Lewis Lockjaw. I don't believe he's, I've uh, met the, him. he's the owner of Templemore, so I can't. I live on that, so I live on Templemore. So he's always quite uh, really supportive as well. I'd say those are probably the closest people to me in right. Second Life, right. especially Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, um, tell us something about Cassie that we may not know. Now, this could be gossip; it doesn't have to be. <laughs> that might or that may surprise us, or that we don't know about Cassie. 
that you, that you might sur- that might surprise you. Mm, let me think of it. I'm quite an open book, to be honest. I think when I come on stream, mm-hmm. I just let my mouth run, and you know, sometimes it might not. I think be people a good respond thing. to that. I think that yeah. yeah, I think people like that a lot. I know I do. Oh, um, sometimes when I say something on stream, I'm like, oh, did I say that out loud? I'm really sorry. Um, something about me that you might not know. Let me see. I have a daughter. Um, oh, yeah. She's she's nine. Um, so when I'm not working, I'm usually spending time with her. You know, even if I have my Abby sort of AFK and in second life, I'm always away doing something with her. Mm-hmm. And my dog Stevie, who's named after Stevie Nicks. Oh, really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how? What is the time difference between here and Scotland? Is I know UK is about what six. And second life, yeah. it's eight hours. Oh, right. Eight hours difference. Okay. Yeah. I always think of it in terms of central because that's where I'm. But yeah, I need to talk SL talk, right? So it's like eight. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Do you realize how, how many years it took me to differentiate the difference between second life time and uh, different regions in America? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. When talking SL, you just got to stick with SL numbers. That's what I've learned. <laughs> you know, just tell me SL time and we'll work it out. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's about eight hours, but see when it comes to like uh, daylight GA savings, when mm. they change the, uh, that, totally messes me up it because I at just... different times, doesn't it? Does? It? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> for, for us, it, as far as UK, I guess you're the same then, right? You do, the UK is the same, right? I mean. Yeah, we're just the, exactly the, the same as London. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and I know we were talking earlier about how, um, Scotland is kind of a like a little magical place to us up here. Yeah. So, so what is it? What? How would you describe Scotland? I mean, when you live here all your life, it's just the norm. You know, it's just normal. Right. You you, you kind of just it's a part of your everyday life. But sometimes when you're maybe walking out in the street and and you kind of look up at the scenery and go, wow, I'm really lucky to live here, you know. Mm -hmm. I think this happened to me quite recently. One of my friends from Second Life loves Scotland, so he's always asking me to take pictures and and kind of send them across. And I was walking, um, I live quite high up, you know, so when I'm walking downhill, the, the, the scenery is just basically a river, right? Mm-hmm. And it's got so many trees, and right next to it, it's like a small castle. Like, a, it's just, you can see that from my bedroom window, you know? So to most people, that's like, wow, right. you've got a castle, right. you know? I it's would. the smallest castle you've ever seen, well. seriously. <laughs> You had um, me at River, so, though, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah, I took a picture, and he said, no. That is not the pit. that's not the view from your bedroom. I, I swear it is. Take a selfie. I'm like, no, 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 no. That is you just trying to get a picture of me. That that doesn't right. happen. <laughs> Sneaky. Yeah. But I I've myself I've never been you know to the UK or in that area at all. But it's it's on my bucket list. So I do plan to try, you know to to go there sometime. I mean, it sounds gorgeous. I mean, if you get nice weather, because it always rains. See, that, I, I mean, like that's, rain. that's the downside. I'm one of those weirdos that like rain. I like rain. I mean, being ginger, the sun doesn't agree with me. I'd burn in like <laughs> 10 minutes flat, you know, so I'd prefer it raining. <laughs> I dated a guy who was part, I think he was part Scott and part, oh, I forget what the other part was, but he was like that, skin like that. He, he could yeah. never go to the beach with me, right? And, and he used to say that he was like a fork in a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is yeah you just have to stay in the shade he was no fun at the beach i mean i'll go to the beach and I'll, I'll jump in the water but i'll always have a sort of wee umbrella next to me you know so i can kind of shade myself a little bit or if you see me an hour later i'll be like completely red i'll be like the same color as my hair put it that way <laughs> and we also talked a little bit about the vote you guys had earlier do you want to do you would you like to talk about that a little and just to say because yeah, i know i had true. asked you what side you were on so take it away go ahead and tell me again <laughs> i mean to be honest it, it can be quite a, a tough topic for a lot of people in scotland i think um when it came up it was it was liberating you know we we were so excited and it was getting news coverage from all parts of the world yes, i remember it yeah, I remember hearing a radio broadcast from America and it was quite funny to hear their take on it, you know. Um, I mean, I was a yes vote 
uh, I always was really. My parents were no votes. Just I think, I think the older you go in generations, they're quite happy to be the way they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're quite happy with the stability. Um, a lot of the younger generations were all kind of voting yes, and they wanted to see a bit of a change. I think the main thing for me was the UK government is a little bit dated. Um, and I just wanted to see a bit more modernisation um, and to see Scotland kind of governing them, themselves. But to be honest, a lot of people ended up being a bit better about it in Scotland at the end of the really? uh, at the end of the vote. Yeah, which was quite sad because I, I had friends that were on either side mm -hmm. and they, they started getting really angry with each other, you know. Um, so that was the downside of that referendum. But the upside is you can see so much change when it comes to government. I mean, there was a general election in the UK recently and we got 52 members of the uh, Scottish par Parliament into the English West Minister. So there's so many changes happening from it, even though we didn't get independence, I can see things are progressing. So I'm quite happy with it, you know. So at least it started a dialogue. Yeah, that's it. But how could they say no? You know what I mean? I, I, how, do you think it's out of fear? I do, yeah, and I think as, as I said, like a lot of the older generations were worried, were, were worried about what would happen to, like, see all the the, the pensions they've worked all their life to save, and mm -hmm. and I can understand that I really can. Um, they were worried about maybe banking situations mm -hmm. and. The whole country would have been turned upside down, put it that way. I mean, it might have been better for the, the generations to come, but it would have been hard for us at, in present times, you know, and, and who wants to really struggle when you're kind of just going all along your business the way it is just now, you know? <laughs> or a pensioner, you know. That's <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, is there anything else you would like to add? I didn't want to keep you all day, but it's been a lovely visit. Is there anything you'd like to, to tell the folks out there? Honestly, I just I just want to say thanks to everyone that comes to the shows and enjoys it. I've always said to Hazel, like, it doesn't matter how many people come, as long as they interact, they chat to us in local chat, that's the main thing for me. If people come and they talk away to me while I'm singing and, and they'll just have a, a, a joke and a laugh and I can see they're enjoying themselves, you know. So thanks for coming and doing that, everybody. Honestly, it's, it makes my night. I, I get home from work tired and I'm like, oh, I'm going to just go for a gig. But after that, I feel regenerated just uh, talking to you guys and having fun, you know. That's the, that's the main thing for me in Second Life and doing gigs. Well, thanks for coming and, and thanks for having me at your venue. I do. I have a great time every week that we're, we're here. Right. And you are one of our favourites. You know, we always oh. like to try. <laughs> Truly, that's not just, you know, lip service or whatever. <laughs> but thanks for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, it's been a pleasure, as, and I knew it would be. Okay. <laughs> and to our <laughs> listeners out there, if you haven't been to see Cassie and our, uh, of one of her shows, you're truly missing out. And you need to be sure to catch her when you can and check out her contact information that's going to be following right now. again.